6 a.m. in the morning. I have this alarm clock, and it has this cute bling-blong sound that wakes me up. And even before I wake up, open my eyes, I can feel this burst of energy inside of me, this anticipation for the day ahead. So I jump out of bed, and I go into my daughter, and I give her a kiss on the cheek, say good morning. I go downstairs, I put on the coffee machine, I grab my iPhone, and I check the emails that came in over the night and uh, the Twitter account while I'm sitting on the toilet. <laughs> there, I said it. I read emails and I check my Twitter account while I sit on the toilet. How many of you do that? <laughs> hands up. Hands up. And you know what? If you don't put your hands up, I don't believe you. Because <laughs> when I was starting to explain to a friend, you know, this is what I do, and I'm just really pumped up. I can't wait to get my day started. So I just grab it and just like, what happened since I went to bed kind of attitude. And I said, and this is so embarrassing. I don't know if I can say it out loud even to you, and she's a close friend. But I do this. It's not like, that's so embarrassing. And she's like, oh my God, I do that too. I, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to go around and ask everyone. It's turned out everyone I talked to do that. So if you didn't put up your hand, this is us keeping connected, but it's also about us being engaged in something, even at six o'clock in the morning. It's six o'clock in the morning. I want to kill that annoying bling blong alarm clock not only because of how it sounds, but for what it represents. It's a new day at work. I don't want to get out of bed. Can't I just stay here till Friday? What does it matter? But I still drag myself out of bed. I wake up my daughter with a kiss on her cheek. I go and I put on the coffee machine. And I go to the toilet but I don't bring the iPhone with me. How do you feel in the morning? Which one of these two scenarios are most familiar to you? Do you wake up with this feeling, hey world, here I come? Do you wake up with this feeling, oh, can the day be over? or something in between. The sad facts is that the majority of people don't like work. And we heard it from many today. Actually, only one out of five say they love their job. One out of five say they hate their job. And the rest don't really care. How do you think that this influences our lives? How do you think this influences the way we feel about ourselves? How do you think it influences our relationships, our families? And how do you think it influences the quality of our work? We spend the majority of our waking hours working. We just heard it, 10,000 days. And still we accept that that's not okay. Those 10,000 days, the majority of our waking hours. We talk about work-life balance as if we're not supposed to live while we're working. What is that? Why don't we call it life balance and see work as a great, fulfilling, integrated part of our lives? So how do you feel for your work? Are you engaged? Are you one of those that do jump out of bed, at least often? Or have you stopped caring? Do you feel alive? Do you? Because if, yeah! Because, and if you're not, you have to wake up. Because we're supposed to feel alive. We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to have a good time, even when we work. And it's even good for our companies. So why don't we? Because there's still lots of people 
that go around and they show up, they bring their bodies to work, but not their hearts, not their passion, not their souls. They bring their bodies to work to get that paycheck. And you know, if you are one of them, you need to make a change. You need to make a change in your life because you have accepted nothing but a slow, premature death. And I know what I'm talking about because I was nearly there. I want to tell you a story. It's about passion. It is about losing passion. And it's about getting passion back again by being a corporate rebel. This is my story. I used to work for a Norwegian IT company called Tamburg. We were a bunch of passionate entrepreneurial souls on a quest to change the world with our technology. And my job was to look after the corporate culture, what I call the corporate soul. In 2010, we were acquired by Cisco global IT company of 60,000 people, and we were 1,700 people. So when this happened and afterwards, I often have got that question, what was that like? How did, how did that feel to be acquired? And I usually tell, it was like, actually it was like the love of my life. My boyfriend broke up with me. And not only did he break up with me, but he even said, hey, and I got your, a new boyfriend here. An American boyfriend. And he's big and he's rich, oh, big muscles. Now you can be with him. I was heartbroken. I was devastated. I, I still loved my old boyfriend and now I should be with his other one. But it was over, the other, and I just needed to learn to know this new one. Was that someone I would like? Is this someone I could, could enjoy being with? Is that someone I could love and that could love me back? But I decided to give the relationship a chance. So the first thing I did was to go out and get to learn, to get to, get to know this new boyfriend or company um, and its culture. What was it? What was the soul of the company? So I talked to lots and lots of people, hundreds of people. What is it? Tell me. Help me understand. And there was lots of different ways of describing it, but almost everyone, when they heard where I came from, they were like, oh, yeah, I know, you know. Oh, Cisco, we used to be like this too. We used to have all this passionate energy and fun and stuff. But then we grew, and we became big, and we became a multi-billion global co company, and it kind of... You know, we forgot about it on the way. But we still like it, but it's not really what we focus on creating now. And I heard this so many times before, and I, I hadn't worked in a big company before, so I didn't actually know what that was like. But I heard others say that, oh, it's okay when you're a small company, you can have all this craziness, entrepreneurial spirit and stuff, but the moment you get big, you need to be really serious. But this wasn't like really serious people. This was like passionate, fun-loving, happy people. But for some reason, they thought that, well, we work in this big corporation, so we need to be really serious now. And I thought, what a shame. Because that people can be themselves, and they have to pretend something they are not. So after this interview, I came up with an idea. What if we just change people's mindsets about who they work for? Because the fact was, people think about this big corporation and, and almost like it's like working for a machine. And I say, well, just let's leave that machine and move into another picture. A picture where we are lots of people coming together to create something amazing, like changing the world with technology. And we can work for like a mega tribe. And we can be all these little small tribes and we're passionate and we have our little subculture. We just get stuff done and we can, we can have fun. We can be energetic. We can be entrepreneurial within our tribes. And I tested the idea with lots of people and, and somehow it really resonated. People seemed to, yeah, yeah, you know, that sounds great. We want to do that. So I was all pumped up and I just, wow, I'm going to go out and I'm going to change how everyone feel about the company they work for and everything's going to be fantastic. 
And I got all this passion back, and it was wonderful. And I really thought I could make a difference through my idea. But then I learned that when you work in a big corporation, the time from an idea to actually making it happen can be very long. And it can be very complicated. And it's not even sure that you come to the place, that you do get everything in place to get that permission that you need to have on the other side in order to be able to move forward. So I tried, and I, I went around, and I, I tested, and it took time. And I have to tell you this. Patience is not one of my virtues. Oh, you can tell already since you're laughing. <laughs> and I started to get so frustrated. And I tried, and I tried. And it was like walking around in the labyrinth. And I didn't know where to go and how to get this done. And then one day, someone came over to me, a well-intended colleague, and said, Anakin, you know, I see what you're trying to do. And I admire your passion and your enthusiasm. And I really like your idea. But you have to understand, you're working for a big company now. And this is how we do things. And you need to learn that big company mindset. Because it's just going to make your life easier. Because this way, you're, gonna, you're just going to be burned out by even trying. And I was so tired by then. I've been trying so hard. And I was so tired. And I see other people doing that. And I'm thinking, OK, I'll just do that. Maybe this was just a stupid idea. Here I come, little Anakin from little Norway, and thinking she can change the way of a big corporation. Who did I think I was? So I kind of settled. I decided to do a different kind of job, just do what I was, you know, expected to do, and do it well, get, get my decent paycheck. And I could feel my energy drain. And drain. And one day, I got a phone call from a friend. And she asked, how are you doing? I haven't talked to you for months. And last time, you were so pumped up about this idea. How's it going? And I told her about the last couple of months, and, and uh, I ended up on the note like, well, well, you know, it is what it is, not much I can do about it. It was all quiet. Then she almost screamed, who are you? Who, who is this woman? Where is, where is Anakin? Where is passionate, never-ending, enthusiastic Anakin that never sees a problem, that only sees opportunities? Who are you, alien woman who has invaded her body? First, I got really, you know, a spark of anger. Hey, who was she to judge? But then, there was also a different spark. It was like a spark of energy, a spark of hope, a spark of something I hadn't felt for some time, but it just felt so good. And after we hung up, I went to a mirror. And I just stood there, and I stared myself in the face. And I asked myself the same question. Who are you? What happened to you? What are you afraid of? Are you most scared of losing your job? Or are you most scared of losing yourself? That day, everything changed. It was like I, 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 I woke up from a dream. It was like I had been, been dreaming and living a life I wasn't supposed to live. I was being a person I didn't want to be. And I just decided, I want to go for it. I just want to test this idea. I'm just going to find out the people who believe in it. And we're just going to go ahead. We're just going to make it happen. And we did. We just got people together. We invited. We created this workshop. And within 12 months, I had nearly 1,000 people going through this concept, which I call the United Tribes, getting the passion back, getting the energy back, starting to think entrepreneurial again, starting to connect, starting to feel like we can really influence, even though we work in a big company, we can still influence where we are. And they were surprised when they could see they could influence so much more than they actually thought they could. So this experience, to me, was that people have amazing capabilities. And we don't need to feel like we're cogs in the wheel. We shouldn't feel that. We should feel like we're all here to do something extraordinary together. And when you can release that power, people can do the most amazing things. There's a saying, if you put fences around people, you get sheep. But we can choose if we want to be those sheep. Because the fences might be around us, but we don't have to act as sheep within it. And the fact is that after we get all these people together, not only do they feel happier or smiling more at work, 
they also started creating outstanding results. Because passionate people do great work. And you could see increase in how people you know, felt about the job, but also in the results, cost savings. You could do all the bottom line stuff that the economists love so much. And suddenly people realized, wow, this makes sense. It's worth investing in. And Brene Brown, she's a wonderful author, and she said this, some things are so important to us that we do them, even if we fail. And you know what? This was exactly how I felt. If I hadn't followed my heart, if I hadn't followed my passion, if I hadn't followed the true belief, I wouldn't be who I was. And I was willing to take the risk, because it's worth it. By the end of the day, that is what matters. So based on these experiences and based on, on what I learned talking and learning from other people is that there's some very simple kind of ground rules of what you do as a corporate rebel. And I want to share them with you today because I think the capacity of people in this room, what we can do together is nothing but amazing. But we need to do something. We can't just sit here a full day and be inspired and go back and do everything just as we did before. We need to do things differently. And I just want to give you some really, really simple guidelines on what you can start doing now, immediately. Use your passion as your compass. What's important to you? Follow that. Focus on things you can influence. There's so many things we cannot influence, but you'll be surprised when you start focusing on what you can, how much you actually can achieve. Ask why. Don't be afraid. If things don't make sense, Ask, why do we do it this way? Maybe we can do it a different way. But you come from a place that you want the best for the company you work for. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. I learned this. I never got the permission, but I got forgiveness because when they saw the results of it, of course, they wanted more of it. Dare greatly, because it's worth it. Follow your heart, because it knows what's best for you. And rebel because you care. Rebels change worlds. Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Steve Jobs, they change worlds. Corporate rebels change corporate worlds. So are you ready to become these corporate rebels that will change your corporate worlds? Then go out there and be passionate Bring your heart in what you do and have lots and lots and lots of fun with it. Be a corporate rebel because you care. Thank you very much.